Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. Today I'm going to do a review of the HTV Rot Auto Heat Press. This might be a heat press that you're looking at for the holiday season or any time of the year to purchase for HTV sublimation crafts, that type of thing. So I thought I'd go over the features and sort of my opinion on it. Now I'm going to make two projects in this video, but I did want to note that I have used this press off camera for other projects. So this is my true and honest opinion after using this machine. So the first thing we're going to do is look at some of the features as well as the control panel. So first of all, this is the press. This is the press in its open state. So this is as far up as it goes. And this is not on right now, so I will not burn myself. It does have a drawer, so it has a pull-out drawer that pulls out, and it does pull out to almost a full extension. There is a little bit that's under the heat plate in this area. It does come with a pad, so the pad is on the platen when you get it. Now, the pad itself is secured with a few elastic ties on both sides. The surface underneath this pad is a hard surface, so if you wanted to use another pad on this, it might be difficult because of the way the drawer slides in and out and the fact that this doesn't lift up very far, but you could try alternate pads. Now the pad itself is fairly firm, so I do feel like it would work for a wide variety of sublimation and as well as HTV type of projects. So this surface is where you add your project to and then you slide it in and it has an auto close feature or you can close it manually and we'll look at both of those options. Now the clearance between these two is not very big, so at the most, the thickness of your project should be about one inch thick. So that would be the maximum thickness. Anything thicker than that is just not going to go into the press. The press itself is actually not terribly heavy in comparison with my other presses, which I both like and dislike. So I like it for the ease of moving it around, and I dislike it because a cheap and flimsy press is not what I'm after. So I both like and dislike that it's not very heavy. And then I do already have this plugged in, so let's take a look at the control panel next and what all those buttons do. So this first button turns the press on and off, so I just press it once to turn it on. Then you have the temperature and the time button. So let's say I wanted to set the temperature. I could press the temperature button, and I can see it's set to 240 degrees Fahrenheit, and I can move it up and down and just press the temperature button again to set that. Same for the time, I would press the time button, and right now it's 20 seconds, and so I can move it to say 30 seconds, press the time button again to set that. So the plus and minus buttons move those time and temperatures up and down. In this state where the drawer is pushed in, if I push this button, which has an R, it will close the press. So this button is for the manual operation of the press, and at any point while it's pressing, I can press it again to open the press up. So in an emergency or if I accidentally closed it, just press that to open it back up. The buttons across the bottom, the first one is five presets that come preset on the machine. The second button allows you a couple of presets that you can set yourself. So I can go to that first one, hit the time and temperature button and adjust that. And now the preset is set with what I set it to. So if you have a couple commonly used materials that you always use, that second button comes in handy. The last button is the auto button. So if I turn that on, an A appears on my screen. And now I'll pull the drawer out. I could be putting whatever I wanted inside. And as soon as I close the drawer, the press will automatically start. This means I don't have to use this R button at all to press. However, if I've pressed down and I don't want it to, I can actually press the R to lift it up. Otherwise, let's set the time for a very short time. So now I have the time set for five seconds and I have it in auto mode. And now I'm gonna close the drawer and it's gonna press down for five seconds and I'm not going to touch anything on the press itself. And I'm going to show you that it will auto open. So it is an automatic opening press. The press itself does heat up very quickly, which is another feature that I like. And when I turn the press on, you might have heard on the video a motor running. So there is a fan or motor running when you turn the heat press on. So if I turn it off, that noise stops. And when I turn it on, you can hear that fan motor fire up. So you will need to get used to the sound of the HTV Ron Auto heat press. So now I have this heating up for my first project, which is going to be a t-shirt. 
I am going to leave the automatic on for this one. I'm going to turn it off for my second project so you can see projects both ways. So I have it set to 305 degrees for 15 seconds for the Caesar Easy Weed that I cut and weeded with my Cricut machine. And I did want to note one thing I neglected to mention. If you hold down that temperature button, it will change to Celsius. So you can have this in Fahrenheit or Celsius depending on your preference. And you might have heard the machine beep just then. It does beep when it reaches temperature. So we'll go ahead and open this tray. Now the first thing I want to say is the tray itself I find a little limiting. Um, so if I wanted to use this press, I would probably put my collar towards the press. That's how I would generally do a shirt. And when I do that, it's just a little awkward. This portion is hot and I find it a little awkward to get inside. And now I'm just gonna close this and let it pre-press a little bit. However, you can kind of think of things outside of the box, especially if you're doing things, say like a hoodie or something like that, you might want to have not have the bulk in the back because that bulk might not fit inside of this press. So you can do things like turn it to the side. So maybe I could do it the side, have the sleeve sort of in the press, and I would just need to make sure to orient the HTV in the right place. But this kind of orientation would work as well. And just sort of opening and closing this for illustration purposes. Also, um, if you like to thread your shirts, which means just putting one layer on the press at a time, with this press, I would probably do that from the back. So sort of put your shirt on upside down and have your collar up here. Just putting one layer on at a time. The bulk of your shirt at this point will be kind of in the throat area of the press. And this is where it gets a little bit annoying. So I like to thread shirts, especially for certain projects or certain type of projects. Um, so let's just say this is how I would usually put it on. When I go to close this, it won't close. There's just too much bulk of the shirt inside the throat of that press and underneath the press. So I don't find it very convenient for things like that. You may be able to thread from the side, but I do find that I have to play around with this base to get the projects I usually just do on my other presses. So if I wanted to thread this way, then the railing slide system for the drawer would be in the way. So I will say there are some drawbacks, in my opinion, to this drawer, especially because the press itself doesn't open up wide. So I just feel it's really limiting and I just kind of struggle with the drawer configuration on this particular press. All right, so let's get the shirt itself back on this press. The press itself is a 15 by 15, so even very large pieces, I can just press them one time. So I'm gonna find approximately the center of this HDV design, add it to my shirt. I do like that the entire shirt is out of the press so I can really get a look at it, locate my design correctly. For me, HTV in this press is simple, right? So it already has a carrier sheet, it's already protected, I don't have to worry about it, it's nice and thin. The only thing I've struggled with is HTV on thicker items. A big, thick, bulky hoodie, things like that. That's where I struggle a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and push this in and let it automatically press. Again, it will go down, it will press for the full 15 seconds. Now, I myself haven't had a ton of issues with the pressure of this press. I would say it's about a medium pressure press. However, I have seen others online that have had issues with the pressure being uneven, not the same across the entire heat platen. I haven't had those issues, but I always try to take note when I see that others do. Now, this HTV is a warm or cool peel, so I'm just gonna let it cool for just a second, and then we can peel it back, and you can see that it pressed this HTV perfectly and it looks really, really great. So there's one project with the HTV Rot Auto Heat Press. Now for my second project, I actually wanna turn the automatic off just for illustration purposes. And I'm going to set the heat at about 385. And I set the time for 55 seconds. So I am going to sublimate this notebook with a sublimation print I printed on my sublimation printer. So I'm actually going to kind of take apart this notebook a little bit 
and remove the inside. And I just want to sublimate the front of this notebook. So with something like this notebook, I only wanna do the one side. So I would probably hold it to the side of my press to do that. So I'm gonna attempt that with this press and we'll see how it works. So I'm gonna put some pre-cut pieces of butcher paper on the top and the bottom. And we're gonna kind of pre-press this. So I'm gonna add it. And now when I close that drawer, nothing happens. I'll need to press the R in order to shut the press. I'm gonna preheat 10 seconds or so. Then once I'm ready for that to come up, I'll just press the R again for it to come up and then I can pull the drawer out. Now what has happened is my butcher paper is stuck on the top of the heat press all the way back in there. So I'm gonna go from the side and sort of remove that. That is a feature I don't like not being able to see the heat platen quite, quite frankly. So I'm just going to sort of clean this up and then just have a sublimation print. I'm just gonna add that to the front of this notebook. And then I'm going to tape it in place well. So that what you saw just happen with that protective paper could happen with my sublimation print. So it could also stick to the top of this press. So I like to tape down really well and ensure that doesn't happen to me. So I don't want anything stuck to the top of this press. So I tend to use a bit more tape than I probably would in other cases. And then I'm gonna cover up with this protective paper again. And this time we're gonna press for the full time. And we're just over here on the side. So I am covered completely with the heat press, platen, but I'm really curious to see if sort of it being off balance a little bit will affect the press or not. So I also wanted you to note that even though this is not an automatic mode, when the time is up, the press beeps and it lifts up. So it does not have to be in automatic mode to have the auto open. So my sublimation print is still here, but again, the butcher paper stuck, basically like at static electricity, it's stuck to the top of that press. So now I'm just going to peel this sublimation print back. And the sublimation on this is absolutely gorgeous. So there you see my notebook cover and I would just assemble this notebook back inside and I would have a cute sublimation notebook project all with the HTV Ron auto heat press. So now let's talk about pros and cons of this press and whether you should buy it or not. So in this video, I made both a sublimation notebook as well as a shirt with a fun crafty quote. By the way, the file for this shirt is free and I will link to it in the description below this video. So grab the free file to make some projects of your own, no matter what heat press you have. So the HTV Rot Auto Heat Press. Let's talk about pros and cons. The pros for me are it's inexpensive, it's lightweight, it has an auto close and auto open feature, and it heats up quickly. The cons for me are quite frankly, the drawer. Number one con, I just think it's too limiting with the fact that the press does not open very far. So with that small opening of the press, I just feel like my hands are getting way too close to the heated surface. And then I showed you a few examples of how the drawer might not work for you. And it might not close correctly in all cases, depending on the materials you're putting inside. Second con is the fact that it only opens about an inch that limits you on your blanks and the size of them. And then the third con for me, you saw the butcher paper itself kind of stick with static electricity. The other thing is, let's say I had something that was fairly thick, like if this notebook would not come apart, let's say, and I was gonna sublimate on it like this, it is just so close to that heat press platen. By the time I get my sublimation print on and my butcher paper, I'm always scared that it's gonna hit that press and sort of knock it off location, crunch it up and ruin the print, anything like that. So things that are even close to the size that would go inside this, I always hesitate to use them. So I do feel like this press is very limiting. However, some people love it. They love that auto open, the auto close feature. The auto close feature for me is a pro and a con. It's a great feature. However, a con is that I'm always worried I'm gonna have my hands in the way. So always be sure safety first, keep your hands on the handle at all times as you close. If you have that auto close on, that way your hand is out of the way when the press closes. But there is the safety feature at all times where you can press a button and it will open up. So I do like 
that it has some safety features as well. So for me, the auto open is kind of a pro and a con, just depending on how you feel about it. Also with any auto pressure press, you can't adjust the pressure. So it is limiting on the projects you can make. So if you wanna make a project that specifically calls for something like heavy pressure, you probably will not be able to make it in this press. The press just does not apply enough pressure for that to happen. You only have one pressure setting and that is whatever it closes to. You can't really adjust that. So next, how does this heat press compare with other auto heat presses? You've seen me use the Cricut Auto Press before most likely, and so I will compare it to that one. I like the fact that the Cricut Auto Press opens really wide so I can kind of get in there and adjust things. The Cricut Auto Press also has like a two inch pressing maximum thickness, so that is way larger than this one. However, the Cricut Auto Press is way more expensive than this press, so that should factor into your decision as well. Otherwise, it's about the same as far as pressure goes. I find the heating time is about similar. The Auto Press is a little heavier, but I do like that I can store the Auto Press upright. So if I wanted to store it in a small closet or behind a door or something like that, the Cricut Auto Press is perfect for that. And then the Cricut Auto Press has an auto open feature, but it does not have an auto close feature. So you always need to close it. And I would say that the closing of the two, if you manually close this one is about the same. So on the Cricut Auto Press, you press the handle, you just use a couple fingers or press it down. On this one, you use the button to press it down if you wanna close it manually. So it is the same. So it is a very easy to close press either way you go. I feel like that is one benefit of any auto press is that they are extremely easy to close. So if you have trouble with your hands, arthritis, that type of thing, an auto press might just be something that you need. If you struggle closing a regular heat press, this will solve those issues for you. Otherwise, I know that people have had huge successes with the HTV Auto Heat Press, and this might be the heat press for you. Hopefully this video has helped you a little bit decide if the press would be the right one for you. You can also head to heatpressroadmap.com and I'll put that URL right here, where Corey, George, and I have reviewed the HTV Ron Auto Press along with a ton of other heat presses. So if buying a heat press is on your holiday wish list or your wit crafty wish list, then you wanna be sure to check out that course. It will walk you through tons of different heat press options and help you decide which heat press or heat presses are the right ones for your crafting, no matter what type of crafter you are. Now, if you have any questions about the HTV Ron Auto Heat Press, or anything I've covered, drop down in the comment section, ask away. If you like this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of those. So thank y'all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.